I mean, just how bad will it really get when it comes to this, the effects of these geomagnetic storms? Uh, and, and how much danger are we in? And I don't wonder about this Elon Musk's Starlink satellites. Will they be able to handle what's about to take place? You know, there's a lot here. So we're going to be asking Mike about that. Some of you want to know, can, can you tell us who was in the coffin? Um, I don't think, I think Mike has said several times he's not going to tell you that until it happens, but he's told you it's going to be a significant, and when it happens, everyone's going to know. You'll know that that was the moment. Um, but uh, he may have some other bombs he's going to drop on us here tonight, so we want to be prepared for that. Uh, I just know this. What about the, the situation? We haven't even talked about it, but the wars, the rumors of wars, you know, we have serious problems going on right now. And they're even now talking about dividing the land of Israel. Did you see that? The United Nations voted yesterday 154 to 9 to hold a peace summit in Moscow. And to solve this peace summit is not to solve the Russia Ukraine war, but to solve the Israel Palestinian conflict. And the United Nations voted 154 to 9 to set up a, a summit in 2023 in Moscow, Russia, of all places, when a war is going on to bring world peace. I'm just stunned by this kind of stuff. I really am. I, I'm just a little stunned by it all. I, I just don't understand it. But it's not for me to know. It's really not for me to know. So we're waiting for Mike around the world to be joining us any moment. Uh, this would be a good time to get your ticket ordered. Go to the, my website at paulbagleyprophecy.com and order your ticket for the webinar tonight. And joining us right now from somewhere, some undisclosed location, somewhere around the world, it's Mike from around the world. Don't bet you, Pastor Paul, how do I sound? You sound good to me. I was just telling him all I have is my cell phone tonight. Uh, I don't have the system to plug you in direct. I think they'll be able to hear you. You sound good, though. I hear you pretty good, so they should be able to hear you. Good, good. I'll talk louder if needed. I'll just, you know. Yeah, yell a little bit. Let it rip. Okay. How are you tonight, Mike? Good. Quite busy. How do you like the uh, sun? I ask, well, <laughs> it's, it's making me nervous, Mike. I mean, the sun exploding. What yeah, is it's, it? uh, it's, uh doing his thing we're, you know we're gonna have uh I, I guess you could say this is uh preliminary because we'll have at least i i suspect we'll have at least four or five carrington events back to back here shortly whoa um, as things get worse we'll surpass uh that time it'll be far worse than that so when you say carrington events and that happened of course in 1859 we talked about that earlier in the show but to, 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 for you to make a statement, you suspect we'll have four or five of them back to back to back. Why? I mean, you're, you're, are you saying the sun is going to go completely insane? Oh, yeah. We're having, a, we're starting to have, I guess, collectively major disruptions in how things, uh, how the celestial mechanics operates. So it's going to get, you know, it's going to get pretty rough. It's going to be a rough ride. It's a gradual process. But if you notice when it takes hold, it, it keeps repeating itself, right? Uh, so the frequency at which these things are happening is getting, you know, that number is getting uh, higher and higher. Uh, in, in this case, we're having more and more things take place. Just all sorts of things are taking place. In the uh, time span, it's very short for those things. And it's increasing. You know, it's increasing. Like somebody is, uh, uh, the volume is being turned up or something. So it's um, it's just, you know, one of those things you can't expect. And, of course, I believe the biblical aspect of it. No, oh, boy, there's so many things to uncover and unpack in that. Yeah, yeah. The but we are, uh, <laughs> oh, boy. You know, I was just looking at uh, um, doing a little being nosy about taxes and I was, I was looking at taxes. I was reminded of something very old uh, because the world really did not have taxes until Egypt. 
Okay. In Egypt, during the time of Moses, uh, taxes were, uh, right before his time, they were enabled, taxes were enabled to keep Christians from uh, giving anything to God. That's yeah. what taxes were for. To steal the tithe. To steal their tithe. Yeah. That's exactly what it was for. It was to keep them to, from sacrificing to the living God. And then uh, that, that was one individual that did that. And as a result of that, when they stopped doing that, uh, Egypt had a bit of prosperity until a secondary pharaoh came in. And then uh, he stopped worshiping um, some of the pharaoh gods and everything started to fall apart, which made their taxation even more important. And, of course, that was adopted in Rome also. And if you look back at some of the, some of the, uh, some of the topics, uh, of course, in the papyrus, you can find that in the, uh, the uh, Haris papyrus in Egypt. But in Rome... It was uh, documented much like we document things in Congress. Um, they did the exact same thing because, and it was all to keep Christian worship leveled out. Mm. Mm. Well, that's partly what the devil wants to do. Is he, is he tries to attack, one way to attack the gospel is to attack the finances of the gospel. And, right. and by it, and oh, and, and it's not just that it, it's attacking the finance of the gospel, but it attacks people's blessing because because right. the blessing says, if you give, it shall be given unto you. You know, if you steal people's uh, blessing away, then you keep them in slavery and in poverty. They're no longer the head, but they are the tail. Yeah, I think a lot of people can't recognize we're right back. Um, we're, we're, I know a lot of people think we have evolved past those points, but think of something. Most people work very, very hard for their house, for their clothes, for food, right? right. And they don't have any more money, right? And so the same mentality is back again as it was in Egypt right before the Exodus, where people are working to stay alive. They just don't see it that way. It's not marketed that way, right? They, they really think they're living in a type of uh, paradise, but in truth... It's, it's almost like a, a uh, unseeable control system that will have. You still there, Mike? Mike, are you still with? I believe me, people fight each habit just like they did in the past. Yeah, there there will be. Uh, and uh, you just got silence there for about 10 seconds, Mike. But. Uh... You're hitting... Oh, really? Yeah, go you, figure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go figure. You're, you're, you're stepping on the, the big man's toes. Who is the big guy? Anyway. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it, it's happening. You know, it's happening again yeah. at a time when, uh, you know, a lot of weird things are happening, Pastor Paul. I mean, a lot of strange things are happening. What do you think uh, about this, frequently. Mike? And, and we'll get back on the sun here in a minute. And, and, and the what when you said three or four Carrington events in a row, I'm going to ask yeah. you, what is that going to do to the earth? But before we do, what do you think about the United Nations yesterday voting? And the United Nations General Assembly voted 154 to 9. There was only 10 nations that abstained, I guess. 154 to 9 to have a, a, a peace summit in Moscow, but not to solve the Russia-Ukraine war, to, and to, uh, to go to Moscow and to solve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And they they agreed to do it, 154 to nine, and it, and and oh by the way, I read the rest of it was starting with the pre 1967 borders. Yeah, well, you know what that is that is uh, Moscow is where one of the uh, dedications took place a long time ago uh, with Russia. That that seems to be a centric point for very ancient things, doesn't it? Yeah, ancient uh, gods of worship, and believe me, they keep these. They keep these ancient things uh, fed very well, meaning that they serve the needs of these ancient gods. They do. Moscow was one of those points in fact, abortion and a, a bunch of other things were legalized right there in, in uh, right there in Russia. And then they, you know, spanned all over the U S but um, it seems to be a point where anything that happens spiritually that is uh, spiritually defiled starts right there every single time. And I think that due to a lack of history, um, 
people don't really understand principalities and powers that they don't you know they don't go away they, they stay right there so no matter who comes into power they're going to be under the, the 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 rule of some of these spirits or else they're not going to be in power i think that's one of the explanations for putin i think it is he has been spiritually overcome um nowhere in the bible do i ever read where a person who is put in a specific position even solomon hinted at the fact that you had to deal with this when you go into positions of highness, he, he actually said appreciate those positions of lowness because when you go into a position of highness, you have to deal with very ancient things. And it's it's one of those uh, themes that are echoed throughout the word of God of that's what you have to deal with. It's like uh, people who have money. Before you have any money, any significant amount of money, you have one spirit. As soon as you get money, you're going to have to deal with the spirit that comes with money. Right. I mean, there's a spirit that comes with money. Sure there is. And if you're not, if you're not careful, it can drive a person insane. And um, the same thing is happening in these places. I, I do expect them to divide to, to officially. But in my humble opinion, I think they've already done it. Uh, because when you have the U.N., and you have all these people. This happened two year, two or three years ago. They all decided that Jerusalem should not belong to Israel, right? Yes. This is on paperwork. Yes. They decided that in, in their minds that Israel is already divided, which is why they have an issue making Jerusalem the capital, right? Yes, yes. Because if they have decided that Israel shouldn't have certain parts of that land, then there you go. And then we read in the Bible where it says that uh, the Lord said, they departed his they parted his land. Well, that's looking that was a prophetic statement looking in hindsight. They're gonna do it. They're gonna you know, do they're it. They're gonna do it. They're gonna do and it. when they do it, um, that's gonna be this now here's when they do this, that's the exact time when many of the armies are gonna be in the Middle East too. But even in the book of Isaiah, when that happens, all the armies of the earth will be destroyed. And so we have an issue, Pastor Paul, because in the Bible, it says all the not some, all the armies of the earth will be destroyed. All of them will be. And uh, which means that everybody takes this position against Israel. And a lot of people I remember on your show, Pastor Paul, about five years ago, there were lots of people who said, well, the U.S. will never do that. Well, Nobody's in a rush to say that now. No. We have actually uh, spearheaded some of the uh, m many of the talks over the last, what, 10 years dealing with Israel being parted and how people have uh, supplemented this sentiment of Israel having all that land. They tried to supplement by giving them favors, this, that, and the other to get their minds off that land being parted. And, and they have really just, uh, you know, they've really done a job, in my opinion. It, it, the world has turned its back on everything God has put in place. Everything God put in place, the world turned its back as though there is no God, right? They're, they're just this. That's an overwhelming theme. The world, God says, don't part my land. They say, well, what God? There's no right. God. And they take his authority doing what they want to do. There are repercussions for this. And those repercussions are building. And um, that's why people don't have the time they think they have. Because many, many upon many are falling into this mentality that God's not going to do anything. Or that it's just an ancient idea. As a consequence, our youth is corrupted. Uh, the world within itself is iniquitous and corrupted. And laws support high corruption against the living God. So how long do people think we're going to last in this condition? Because historically, every time a, a one of those nations that initially worshiped the Lord, who turned their back on the Lord, they were destroyed right yes. after they turned their backs. And so the same thing that happened to them is happening to us right now. So it's this crescendo building up and it will take its toll. You know, you bring out such a great point that they do these things in total rebellion to God. They blaspheme, you know, and it says in the book of Revelation in during the in the uh, 13th chapter, it starts talking about the beast uh, and this kingdom. It says that they blaspheme. I think it says they let's just read a couple of verses here where he says it, it says they and uh, yeah, verse five. This is Revelation 13, 5. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto them to continue for 42 months, for three and a half years. 
And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Blaspheme, blaspheme, blaspheme. They, they act as if God's word isn't true or there is no God. They're not afraid of his consequences. They're in total rebellion. And they're going to bring destruction upon themselves and their nations with this uh, idolatrous, paganist hatred toward God and God's people. And, and yep. you know, and, and so there's something about Babylon. There's something about Magog. There's something about these, you know, Damascus. There's, there's something about the Euphrates. What is going on, Mike, that there's these, these are um, the meccas of, of, controversy and evil or why is it in these certain areas that this stuff just festers those are clearly when the lord told the lord told us we don't war against the flesh but a principalities and powers it's like a lot of your audience out there there are people in their lives um they would wish would go away right every every single person has somebody in their lives that they don't really like they just don't like that person but and they think that their solution is getting rid of the person well if they look carefully they'll find this that every time they get rid of a person like that the same spirit that spoke through the one person will end up speaking through somebody else the exact same phrases right. as the one did prior so they're actually in, in combat, so to speak, against a spirit, not the person. You get rid of the person. You just hurt the person. The person, free of a spirit, may not understand what they were doing. But if you get rid of that spirit, now you freed the person and got rid of your problem. And once we grab hold of that, we're going to go. But in these lands, there are principalities and powers that if God spoke about them and if God said they were there, right? then they're going to be there. They, they've been doing the same thing since day one, right? Just since day one in every single culture, the same pattern forms in every single culture in these different places like clockwork. That can't be coincidence. No. Right? And right before the fall of all these other places, right before the fall, they were in high worship. They, they were doing the same things we do. They had their, they, they were worshiping these weird gods, they were not sacrificing unto the living God because God said he's not accepting their sacrifices because they totally went corrupt. They were they were going to uh, in Rome. They were going to Delphi and in Egypt. They were still doing their thing there. And then places over here in the USA, they were worshiping the snake kings, what they call St. Kings, Quetzalcoatl and all these different things. Every single last civilization had a promise. Why did they but have there, some? There came a time, Pastor Paul, when they said their their, their deities were exiled. And it's because I think that when a lot of people are looking for a type manifestation of these ancient entities, they missed one thing. The manifestation of an entity is through the flesh of mankind. Mankind does the bidding of those entities. That's why every single so entity you, had you, you, uh, you, uh, some sort of priest that a person would go to and speak to the priest. So the we're priest some kind of a host. I mean, are we, we basically become the host for these entities. Right. Allow it. Collectively. Yeah, collectively. collectively, yeah. Collectively. And so, you know, Jesus got rid of all this stuff. He did because everything collapsed around yeah. 2,000 years ago. Everything did. And all of a sudden, it's all coming back, right? Yeah. It's yeah. being pushed by media strongly. And the one thing that gets me is that, is it coincidence? Or are we looking at some sort of spiritual development and prophetic development of Revelation because – have you noticed that with iniquity comes a rise in these psychics on television, comes a rise <laughs> in people necromancing or talking to the dead? Yes. These things are like clockwork. They're going hand in hand. And the worst part about it is many Christians, they won't do, they won't say anything about it. They won't. Uh, because let's go ahead and face it. A lot of people are frightened of consequences. They're frightened to lose uh, the one asset they have to take care of their families, which is money. Right. Yeah. And I'm telling you, a day is coming where we're going to have to make a choice. God requires a choice by the heart. He takes care of the rest. But that takes trust to actually walk in that path in that direction and not panic. And so it's coming down to that point because yeah. Christians are going to get a wake up call when they find out that the earth is not sustaining like they thought it was. 
we have some severe things forming in the earth. They're not going to back down. They're getting worse. We're going to have times of reprieve, like I would say right now. Right now, we're at a minimal activity in the earth right now. Watch, it won't last three or four more days. It will not last three or four more days until everything goes back on a cycle again. And it's going to keep doing that. And the frequency of those intense cycles will, will be more and more and more. Just watch and see. And this will go hand in hand with man's decisions, their, their collective agreement to move away from all things of the father is going to show in all these geological processes when they start going upside down and every time man comes up with an explanation a scientific explanation something else is going to happen that they don't understand you can't get ahead of god and and, and he just keeps every time whatever we reap we reap what we sow and and like you said every time we think we got something figured out god shows you haven't got anything figured out. Uh, yeah. Behind me is the, of course, the volcano, the largest volcano in the world over there in Hawaii. And you're looking at the rivers of magma flowing down the mountain. Uh, I think it has come less now. It's almost uh, two miles away from the big, big highway. It's going to cut that island off. People are going to be, well, they'll have to drive all around the entire rim of the island to get from one place. Some folks have to try drive four hours, and that's if the traffic's not bad. And it's obviously the traffic's going to be worse. So tell me, Mike, what's going on with this volcano in comparison to other volcanoes? Uh, it's a big one. And it, why did it take 38 years when it was averaging about every five or six years? Well, right, as of late, we've been having more and more internal processes of the earth kick up more and more magma. More rock is being melted. But I'll tell you right now, that's not enough. I know that looks bad, but we need that plus a lot more to relieve some of the pressure in the earth, right? If the pressure is not relieved in the earth, and maybe Hawaii will become an example of that. I hate to say this, but they have more than that volcano. Right. Yeah. If that gets if that gets corked, so to speak, if that gets clogged up, Pastor Paul, there's still massive pressure in that area. It's going to come up through something. Right. So instead of one going off. Right. We're, you're going to have major eruptions in that place. We're, we're talking about some severe, um, just insane, obscene pressures. What? Lots of pressure. And this volcano, if, if it were letting out a whole lot of magma. And it looked really bad. I could I could exhale, right? But it's not trickling out lava. This is a trickle. It, it's not enough to relieve the, the pressure that's built up underneath it. Uh, you'll notice in a couple of days that they're going to have tremors around that place, right? You're going to notice tremors around that place. That means that the magma is trying to find new avenues. That, that pressure is trying to equalize. This volcano is it, just not enough. It's not enough to equalize it. We have a solar flare, uh, and, and then NASA is also watching some other spots. And we know that the Earth will absorb all that radiation from these solar flares. That's going to go right into the poles and heat the Earth even more, turning more rock into magma, and magma potentially into gases, causing more pressure buildup inside the Earth, and then poof. We don't have relief points. We need more eruptions to relieve some of the pressure in the Earth. In fact, the, the pressure ratio of the Earth has risen in the last 10 years, meaning it's like blowing up a balloon, fastball. Imagine if you could blow up a balloon, right? Air was constantly going inside of a balloon. What you would end up having to do is poke little holes in it. And let's just say that if you poked holes in it, it did not explode, right? Air would just seep out these little holes. But let's say every year the air increased going into the balloon. You would have to poke more holes into it, correct, to equalize the pressure. Otherwise, the whole thing's going to expand, and then it would explode. This is what the Earth is doing right now. Every year, the Earth is taking in more and more radiation, right? Right. From, from our, our magnetospheres, it's redirecting all high-speed charged particles to the North and the South Pole. That's the aurora. And as it goes inside the Earth, the Earth... Is, is just building up an enormous amount of energy, and it has nowhere to go. So that translates into heat. That heat is melting rock. That rock is the magma that you see, right? So the Earth is vibrating. It's shaking these earthquakes, and we have lots of eruptions right now, but it's not enough to let out the pressure that all the crustal plates won't crack to pieces. If, it, if we don't have more eruptions, 
we're going to be in big trouble. We need some big eruptions. Well, what the Earth are will you not serious? Equalize and it will crack. So, okay, so you, as you mentioned, this solar flare, and it's a big one. It's hitting us right now and going to be hitting us through the night and tomorrow. It's it's a big one. So you're saying that that thing is so powerful. It's going to do some serious heating up of the core. Do you expect an earthquake? Uh, I, I kind of think that maybe in the next 24 to 48 hours, we might see a, a, a big earthquake or maybe it's a big explosive volcano or both. Do you anticipate something from this pressure? Well, think of a nuclear bomb, right? When a nuclear bomb goes off, uh, once the reaction begins, it is quite explosive, correct? Same thing happens as radiation is redirected into the poles. The same thing happens inside the Earth. You're looking at a, a, a large yield of nuclear weaponry inside the Earth every time we have one of those solar flares. Now, the difference is this, though. That, that this, this energy coming from the sun is polarized, which means the Earth can handle it, right? Okay. But what happens if you take two car batteries and you connect positive to positive? Um, oh. Or, or negative to positive, positive negative, you get a kapow, right? Right. You hook them up the other way, you don't get a kapow. You get two batteries in parallel. That means they can they can take one another, right? That's what it means. When you have them in parallel, they sh they just share the energy. When they're out of phase or, or, or they're opposite contacts, that energy is going to flow twice as fast through both batteries, destroying both, right? If the Earth is ever... Uh, polarized with a solar flare, and it could be a lot smaller than what we're having now in CME, but whatever the case is, it could be a little tiny one. If the Earth is not in the right polarity, right, we're going to have damage, pure damage, damage that people won't understand. That That's one element uh, that's this rarely talked about. Uh, the Carrington event, they know it was not polarized, which is why it was so devastating. But if the Earth had been in an opposite polarity, the Carrington event would not have happened. People think it's the size of the flare that causes the damage. No, it isn't. It's the polarity of our magnetosphere. That's what it is. Now, is CERN can either absorb that energy or can instantly repel it, right? Magic and repel it. If it absorbs all or if it repels all of it abruptly, it can't do that. It's going to yeah. cause this reaction nobody wants to see. And that's where the damage comes from. That's when electricity and plasma actually flows across the surface of the Earth. Um, but if it's polarized just right, it will absorb all the radiation the sun puts out, all of it. So, so let's say I'm the magnetosphere and the sun's releasing this tremendous amounts of pressure solar winds are blowing there's there's cmes and corona mass ejections there's there's plasma storms if i can absorb it if i as a magnetosphere i can keep it from doing massive damage to the core of the earth and to the earth itself but what but but isn't our magnetosphere been weakened and and is and and i don't want to jump to straight to cern but i, I mean I'm, I'm concerned about cern but what is weakening the magnetosphere fear? think of this Think of this fastball. Here, here's the if, if if we have a weakened magnetosphere, right? Yeah. And say the Earth puts out a large solar flare, right? Now you're 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 you have one arm pointed toward the sun, which is your absorption arm. You have another arm pointed away from the sun, which is your exhale arm, right? Okay. If you have it that way and you're weakened, it doesn't matter when that solar flare hits you, you're gonna get charged up. You're gonna say, ah, I feel good. But if you have your repelling arm facing the sun, Right. Yeah. And your absorption arm away from the sun and the sun sends out some little tiny spark of energy and it hits you and you're in a strong or weakened state. Your arm is going to get blown off. No. Right? Now, do you understand? Right. So if the earth, if the magnetosphere is polarized, it can absorb everything the sun sends out. If it's polarized right, okay. but if it's not polarized right, Pastor Paul, it doesn't matter how strong or how weak it is. We're in trouble. So it's a blessing. It's a blessing. Things have been polarized up until this point. But we have a switching phenomenon taking place. Yeah. Right? Well, so but it, why? it's just like the chemistry, the chemistry in a lithium battery. If you take a lithium battery below, uh, um, let's say, 0.5 volts, right? Do you not know it's going to start to change its polarity because of chemistry? The same thing is happening to the Earth, which means the wrong arm is going up facing the sun and it will not matter what size the flare CME is. 
we're not going to be able to take any of them. All yeah, of them because we're not. We damage. got the wrong arm. We got the we got them. We got them crossed. Well, what's causing right. that? Is it is that what Planet X is doing? I mean, this binary system is it is it is it messing us up and the sun up? Here's the other part. To someone who sends out solar flares, there's a phenomenon that's been happening for many many years. Every time the heliosphere is weakened in a certain part around the big sphere going around our solar system. All of a sudden, we have a solar flare in that direction, right? That's actually an attraction. So the heliosphere, when it's weakened, demands, it causes almost like a demand of electricity to that certain spot. I'm going to call it electricity. And the sun will shoot a flare in that direction. They have a book of solar flares and directions based upon the heliosphere. And every time a flare goes off, they can check it off because they can predict where it's going to go if they measure, if they measure that heliosphere and where the weakened parts are. Right. So the sun is actually regenerating a big protective field around our solar system. Now, if another object comes in that has more influence than our sun, it's going to affect the heliosphere. Right. It will also affect the whatever half it's coming in on is going to affect the entire half, not just a small part, which means solar flares will soon start shooting out in one direction. And when they start doing that, you better believe something is in our proximity, in proximity enough to cause bad damage. All right. Because we already have external influences coming from somewhere out there. We already have this and uh, it's going to get worse, more precise. The sun will seem to divert all of its power to one side or the other. And that will be the side we're going to be affected most on of this incoming system. Wow. Will, and th this is what they, this has been observed. Well, what, what, that, now when this happens, Mike, won't the earth heat up? Won't, won't the sun get past the magnetosphere and start to scorch men like it says in Revelation? We're going to have a photon redirection. Right. Believe it or not, infrared is hot, right? Infrared is hot. So what would stop infrared? What blocks infrared from actually, you know, just boiling the earth? Photons, photons that are that light emitting photons, right, can actually cause infrared to curve. It can actually cause infrared to curve. You take away the photons, right? Infrared's going to pour in all directions from the sun, burning up everything it touches. In the case of a secondary system, the photons are redirected towards the inbound star. When the, and that means the light from the sun will curve oh. or be absorbed to that inbound star. When this happens, the, the, this, the sun is still emitting infrared. That light frequency is still going to shoot out, but now we have no protection from it. We don't have protection. We have no reflective protection from it. We have no shielding protection from it. It's going to heat up our atmosphere. It's going to start heating up the atmosphere. It's going to heat up the surface of the earth. I mean, it's the earth and the waters. We're going to have pressure changes in the water, which means if we had a pressure change right now, the seas would begin to boil on all the coasts without being hot. So without being hot... They just That's right. Without uh, be, being uh, because, hot, they would boil. Because, on, because of the magma coming because up? Because of a pressure change. That's because of a pressure change. Right? It's just like going into a higher altitude. Your boiling point is different at higher altitudes. So if you change the pressure in the earth, Water that's not boiling now, that's that's maybe maybe it's 60 or 70 degrees, can actually begin to boil if that pressure changes. That means it's going to evaporate. That means, you know, everything is going to start drying up pretty quick and everything is going straight up in the clouds, which is going to cause um, uh, some sort of a canopy uh, to be over the earth, which will obscure everything, turning everything red. Because with infrared, now you have that reflectivity caused by the water uh, particles and everything on earth will look red everything will. wow mike from the world's with us tonight folks and this is fascinating so where does cern mike uh play into all of this it is cern, CERN is, it, i'll say it again past paul cern does many experiments right it's a multinational experiment well they publicize one experiment that's for money what has cern perfected their magnets out of all of what they're doing they perfected their magnets so much so that their magnets affect the magnetosphere. So much so that their magnets can actually redirect solar particles. Really? Now that's a that's something, isn't it? 
redirect right? solar particles. That the solar particles are nothing more than high speed particles, just like CERN emits, right? They're controlled to go through that tube by magnets, right? You have to get the magnet technology perfect to guide charged particles. So the miracle of CERN is actually the magnet, something that people never, ever think about. I'm sure that there are some very wise people out there where things are starting to click because they're having all these experiments. Yes, they're making, they're developing things or, you know, science is, 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 is um, uh, going forward and quantum physics is being, you know, sharpened. But the magnets are a miracle, a miracle of science, which means the magnets are perfected to such a point that they can actually, they, they, if they wanted to right now, they could put a magnetosphere over a city right now with those magnets at CERN. And that what that means is if a nuclear weapon went off, right, how do you protect a city from a nuclear weapon the same way you protect the Earth from a CME or flare? You have a magnetic shielding that goes over that city, which can redirect all radioactive particles wherever you want them to go. That's the miracle. See, that's what right there in front of people's faces, they have perfected a technology that is significant. But who's paying attention? Because normally the, the sensationalism of CERN is, you know, the Higgs boson uh, progress and all these different things. And nobody's looking at the magnets. A lot of money went into those magnets. A lot of money went into that. And I'm telling you now, if you if you can control a magnetic field, you can redirect all radioactive particles wherever you want them to go. You can divert all the radioactive fallout and everything else from a nuclear weapon to make it go somewhere else because they're always going to follow magnetic field lines, always. Wow. I did not I did not even realize that. But it does make sense because it's it's like energy or like electricity or like energy. It always it has to flow in the, the way the current is directed. It's, it's energy gonna... is electromagnetic at its heart. Gravity is electromagnetic at its heart. So those, those they understand those even gravity. The concept of gravity has changed. Uh, that was changed eight years ago permanently. And gravity turns out to be not what they thought it was, but in fact, it's it's magnetic field lines and force, and and it's the yeah they, they call it magnetic memory which holds particles together. This is one of the things they found out at CERN. Our bodies are held together through through magnetic memory, meaning that each particle has assigned to it a magnetic shape. And that magnetic shape is passed on from cell to cell so that every cell is automatically going to be attracted to certain systems based upon that magnetic shape. They call that magnetic memory. Quantum computers can replicate magnetic memory of tiny cell structures containing possibly maybe 200 trillion cells or something like that, which means they have found a way through quantum computers to order matter. That's what that means. That's a giant breakthrough. I'll say that one more time. Because they found out about magnetic memory, they have taken quantum computing, which is far stronger than any computer that's out here in the world, right? And they can actually utilize that to replicate magnetic memory in materials and atoms right that means they can order material so if you want a piece of wood the key to making wood is not to go get a bunch of wood is to the matter is all floating around you all they have to do is order how it's put together that's done through magnetic memory and only a quantum computer can crunch the numbers enough to direct how these particles are going to assemble themselves and they have done this they have done it so when they collide these protons in cern in that big tube and that tube behind me folks is actually 27 kilometers i think it is and they're building they're building one that's going to be twice that or i don't know 54 kilometers or something oh they have a big one yeah, yeah it's a big one so they're going to collide these protons at the speed of light to and it when they crash they co- they create new particles new that's right they break they break up they break existing particles down to basic structures Right. In other words, what they do is they they crunch the force that's holding matter together and they break it apart. Right. It's like cracking open an egg to see the yolk. They're doing this because the one thing that has stumped everybody is what the world is holding. What powerful force is holding everything together like it is that the body, the human body is made up of matter. Right. But guess what? We have more air holes in us 
then you could we have more holes in us than matter itself isn't that funny uh metal itself metal if you could if you could if metal uh if you somehow had something that you could really look at metal on a small level you'll find that it's a bunch of particles that do not touch right that are just close together they don't touch so we're, we're like Nothing a living touches. so you like 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 i'm actually filled with molecules that are floating in the air that's right and something's right. holding me something's the glue that's holding force. me that's from right just, that's right and that must be a powerful force to hold everything that's right. so they have been breaking particles down to examine the forces that hold them together and they have found quite a dozens of them so far okay. and they're trying to they have they have successfully replicated uh some of these forces which which is dubbed magnetic memory in other words what what that, that force they can reshape that force and when you can reshape that force basketball, that means you can look at somebody's hand, right? If you could record the shapes of that magnetic force between all the matter, all you have to do is replicate the force. The matter is already there, and you cause another hand to be reordered, seemingly out of thin air. What? Everything, everything is broken down into the most basic of particles. These particle, the assemblage of these particles, right? That determines what the matter is. And further assemblage determines what the molecule is. And further assemblage determines what the matter is. And further assemblage determines other things. So you have to find out what in the world is holding the smallest particle together, right? Once you find that out, they, they determine that this was electronic at its root. It, it's, it's dealing with mag magnetism. That's what it's dealing with. Everything is based on photons and magnetism. You could say that light is holding everything together, right? But within light are some forces stronger than any force anybody has ever encountered. And they've been breaking that down into small little tiny pieces to try and replicate it. If you can order that force, you can recreate matter. Now, if are they trying to do that? Are they trying to pierce the veil? I mean, are they trying to go into another dimension? with CERN or learn how to do I, it? I think in part they already have. They already have. They're extracting, for example, with quantum computing. When you talk to experts in quantum computing, um, they will just tell you, if you ask a quantum computer a question, it will give you the answer before you're finished asking the question. How about that? Say that again. So you, Let me wait. If you ask it one question, uh, if you ask, and I'm giving a visual on this, suppose I asked a quantum computer, um, you know, when's my next test? It's going to give me, before I finish asking the question, it's going to give me, say, 50 dozen answers before I finish asking the question. And when I get the answers, they're going to be highly relevant to my question. That's what quantum computing does. If you extract, if you um, wanted to extract energy or, or antiparticles from that quantum realm, you're going to get out you're going to get out uh, a lot more than what you put into it, right? So it is, it's, it's Pat, we're not talking about zero point energy. We're talking about if, if you put a force into that quantum realm, you're going to get that force times a multiple of thousands coming back your way, right? So wow. as it turns out, that is a governing, they're calling this a governing dimension, not this realm of reality. But that dimension is a governing dimension. So where's that powerful force uh, that's holding everything together? Why is it so? Why can't you? Why don't your fingers fall apart? Why don't you fall through your desk? What's holding these molecules together, but they're not touch? Are these atoms together? These particles together, but they're not touching? What's well, so is on the opposite side? It's a dimension all around us. It is the force that's holding everything together, and it takes uh, uh, quite a bit of tenacity to break that that feel to see into this and they want to see into this so they can harness it and by the way they already have harnessed it because they have negative particle chambers right they built those in 2021 negative particle chambers with a, a, a chamber to house uh something comparable to an atom is about as big as a cell phone right so why would something that holds an atom be as big as a cell phone? Because you're dealing with a lot of power. As soon as you let it go, it's going to go right back to where it came from. And it, it, it's just going to stay. There is no force that can actually hold back whatever's ordered in that realm. So what they're doing is trying to manipulate that realm from this realm. So when God said, when, 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 when Jesus, I mean, the, the rich man and Lazarus and, and the rich man died, 
and Lazarus died. Lazarus goes to Abraham's bosom. The rich man goes into hellfire, some type of confined area of, tor of torment. And he's, But he can see into the other realm. He sees Lazarus with Abraham comforted, and he cries out. And Abraham hears him and says, I, I hear you, but we, we can't get to you. There's a great gulf fixed. Like, uh, is it like right. another dimension, uh, another like invisible? Think of, it, think of it as an impossibility, not not so far as distance, right? Okay. but a sheer impossibility. It, it's almost like we're like a fish that wants to touch your finger. and But the fish is in the aquarium, right? And the aquarium has a top on it that's glued. Nobody can. It's impossible for that fish to touch your finger. He can see your finger. He can analyze your finger, but he cannot touch it. He just can't touch it. He can get close to it. So the only thing that fish can do is examine it. In CERN's case, what they're doing is examining these exotic particles, their construction, how it, when, when they split apart matter, how it affects this opposite realm so they can capture, right, the communication going on between the two. Because if you can manipulate the communication, you effectively manipulate what's on the other side without touching it, correct? Yeah. So that's yeah. what they're doing. Suppose that fish could give you a false signal that it's hungry. You would feed it and get exactly what it wants by communication. And so CERN is another is a is a is a another form of that communication. It's also why they have uh, some of the some of the uh, Indian texts there because all scientists are they're they're encouraged to study these writings. Why? Because they found that they're based in reality, not mythology. Right. They found the vehicles. They found the stuff. They found the experiments. They know about certain places that nobody should go into. Right. There are certain places on the earth that do exist that were left over from a long time ago. Uh, nobody's going to stumble across these places. These places are guarded, but they do exactly what these, those books say they do. So they but are anybody who goes into these places is not going to come back the same. They're just not because yeah. you could step into a place literally for one second and step back in but to the individual it will seem like they were there for a thousand lifetimes now do you think that would drive a person insane yeah if a person stepped into a a place just for a second are these like portals out, are these like uh, like in iraq and there's caves and places i mean are they like portals almost india india has most of them india, india. has most of them india and in, in places near that desert region and going into china and mongolia and all those places they have those most of them but um, there are places just like that there are too many reports coming back of uh lots of military personnel who have stepped into these places stepped out they're fully gray full beards skin is wrinkled and everything else something went severely wrong they were only over there they, they weren't even fully over there there are people who have died in these places um in other words it, it's almost like uh like a time war was running and and some of the terrain was fake it wasn't real terrain and somebody stumbles unfortunately into these areas and they get stuck or something they can't get out and so the only alternative is to kill that person because they'll never get out uh things like that weird things happen things that are not supposed to things that the human brain cannot wrap around and uh are they witnessed a lot you better believe it but they don't really they don't advertise this stuff because people would rather hear about you know some ordered uh, thing like et and his spacecraft and how neat he is he never has toilet paper around no tissues or hanging on the walls it's very neat extraterrestrial instead of you know the picture that some of these craft are, are liquid on the inside just like our bodies you know, what if people found that out that a craft some of these some of these craft that they're so excited about right that they have veins in them that they have uh, blood cells in them right that they replenish those craft with uh sea life and things like that they would that would be attractive would it everybody would repel uh, what was coming right but they don't want people to repel what's coming they want to hide any of the bad stuff so that people say oh they're good people i have a lot of christians pass ball that write me and say listen uh mike from around the world i know that the galactic federation that they're nice people and they're really here to liberate people. These are Christians yeah. saying this, right? Which, and every time I get one of those letters, at first you think it's from, you know, somebody who's not wrapped too tight. But then when you start getting sheer volumes of these emails, yeah. you realize you have a lot of work to do because there's a war happening right now. The question is, who's winning this war, right? 
So people are being deceived and being. And, yes, and, they are. And, and we're and, talking and, about Christians who know their yeah, Bible. Yeah, I know. Faith in Christ, but yeah. but there's 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 some dark things happening. Very dark things happening. So these, there's a lot of spiritual aspect involved in these portals, and, and it's not just dimensional, but it's also spiritual. And I say it's a hundred percent spiritual. Yeah, I, I yeah. say that what they're calling uh, what they're calling dimensional is actually spiritual. CERN, like at CERN, why would they have why would they have a ceremony with people there, right, with priestly robes on? Why? Yeah, why would you do that? Why? Why, why would you have they Shiva? Create ancient rites. Why, why, would they, why would they go pull stuff from museums to read it at CERN? Why? Why? See, something is – some, and I, we're talking about this happens in all significant places, not some all. And CERN is, is just – it's right there in front of people's faces. They got right? the god. They got the goddess uh, Shiva uh, literally sitting out front you know, for the whole world to see. So – and they do these ceremonies like you said which means they they're operating in spiritual realms they're they're entertaining uh, demonic forces and sp in spiritual realms yet this is supposed to be a highly scientific location and i'm not saying it's not but somewhere the the the, the scientific realm the scientific uh world meets a spiritual world um Paul, that that brings in another point because a lot of people are about to find out that that term scientific is a Greek, a very old Greek term, uh, something that the Grecians actually, the, like, for example, the atom, right? The atom, the details of the atom was written about thousands of years ago. So this, 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 if you tell people what science was back then, people would get angry because science was a term. This pursuit of truth was a term. Which in, in which magic was used. We call it magic technology. That's what we call it. They call it magic. And they would actually have mechanisms and things like that for their high priests and temples who worshipped these deities, right? So they knew about the roots and the trees. That's why you read in the book of Enoch how that Azazel and all these fallen angels taught people about the, the all different plants, root cuttings, right. incantations, right. rituals, and rites, and all these ancient things, science, how to make metals, how metals are constructed, atoms, all this stuff they taught. Well, when they teach science, what do they do to a human being? You know, there's nothing wrong. Like God, in, in the book of Enoch, God said it wasn't the knowledge that was wrong. It was the timing. Because man, if, if you give a child an AR-15, and it's loaded, right? What's going to happen? Well, it's and a actually, danger. It, 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 it could kill itself or kill someone else. Right. Or, yeah, right. That's right. Somebody's going to die. You're going to destroy God's right. creation. Right. And what happens if you give a 15-year-old an AR-15? Well, a 15-year-old does not have the experience of having killed someone. They don't know the consequence of death itself. They don't know what you deal with mentally. So they're, they, don't, they don't have enough wisdom to employ that weapon. So they don't know when to employ it, which means they shouldn't have it. They may think they need it, but they have no wisdom to utilize it. The same thing happened with these fallen angels. They gave man premature knowledge. And what did man do as soon as he got that knowledge? He went to war. That's why in the Bible it says they learn war no more. Because with all these breakthroughs that we have, you would think that cancer would be cured. Yeah. You would think that none of us would have to pay for electricity, water, or air, carbon, right. or anything else. But that's not the case. What we do with all these discoveries, we don't heal people with it. We destroy nations and we subdue nations with it. That's what people do with it. That's immature. So, yeah. so I got another question. If we're that immature, why would some advanced race ever come here? <laughs> why, why would they do that? That's ludicrous. I know. <laughs> well, it sounds like what's happened is we are, we are be, uh, professing ourselves to be wise. We become fools. I think Paul said in the Bible and that he might've meant that in doctrinal in doctrinal ways. But I think actually uh, in a lot of ways we outsmart ourselves. I mean, we, we exalt ourselves above the knowledge of God. And then we, we turn on our own selves. We become destructive to our own selves. It's all about power and greed, manipulation and, and how to, in camp slavery making people slaves basically that's all they do we, yeah. we have a nature past we can't even help but to do these iniquitous things because we have not built up 
it, we haven't built up spiritually enough or matured spiritually enough to overcome it, to just simply say no to many of these desires that's in the flesh. Yeah. And the Lord wanted us to be mature before he presented everything. And this is why we have to be we have to be awakened, because if, if people, if Christians saw something that they thought they'd never see in the heavens, you know what a person would do? That the first thing a Christian would say is, I got to get my life right. I can't, I can't play around because they would see something much bigger than anything they ever thought, right? They would see the impossible. With that impossible thing they just saw, they would believe in the possibilities of the word. They would turn back to faith and say, Lord, I need you. I don't know it all. I don't know everything I'm doing here. I need you, Lord. And so we're going to get some pretty significant wake up calls and they're going to begin fairly quickly and they will not stop. They just once they start, they're not going to stop. They will escalate. Mike, uh, tomorrow night the webinar begins at uh, six o'clock. Uh, you know, everybody's wanting to see the map. You know, and I, I was blessed to see it interviewing you, and you showed it. And we spent probably thirty-five minutes just analyzing this thing, and you explaining it to us. What should people prepare themselves for for tomorrow night's webinar, and and how important is it that they they get this information and understand it. Well, one thing, Pastor, I hope that they, you know, once they see that map, they take a mental note of it and track the activity, right? Because uh, chances are it's going to match up with with, with um, those spots when there as time goes forward. And, it, and since that, because I don't expect everybody to instantly accept everything from everybody, right? Right. We've got some great speakers on there. Uh, they, they do a good job. I have a small, tiny, teeny area of expertise. And in that small area, uh, you know, I deem it critical for people to, to actually not, I don't like to see people surprised to the point where they're overcome with fear and they can't stand in faith. That really gets to me. You know why? Because I was surprised one time, Pastor. I was shocked because everybody had told me that certain things could never take place. And when they did, I was just immobilized by fear, right? I was way too trusting of people. And uh, that's just not the way to go because that will lead to ruin every single time. And I hope that as they see uh, in time, as things begin to really um, uh, increase, activity begins to happen with strange things, whatever the case is that they remember, God had given it to somebody to, to, to get that truth out there, that they could be prepared with the truth because all in all, that's what these guys are doing. They're, they, they're, God gives us a passion, an area of knowledge that even we can't explain. And we can't help but to wake up and want somebody else to not fall into the same traps or the same yeah. holes or, the, or to be shocked by this. Yeah. Because fear can destroy. It can absolutely destroy. Fear can cause the most righteous of us to destroy somebody else. And, and destruction is just another weapon of Satan himself. And Satan wants, wants all of us to agree with his minions in the earth. And I'm tired of agreeing with him, right? I'd rather fight Amen. this war by way of faith, which is to stand against him in every way. And information, true information, right, that the Lord gives people because you know it, we're still human we're not going to have everything right a lot of these things are forecast but the point is things are changing at the same time you know the, the collection of guys you put together past Paul, they keep yelling right but yep. things are happening that's not coincidence no right? yeah you, you know that point you just said y yourself and gil Brazard, marshall masters stephen bendenoon uh, bart with his documentary uh with the passion i think you just nailed it Every presentation, the passion, these guys are yelling, they're saying, listen, it's coming. These are these things are going to be taking place. You need to prepare yourselves. You need to understand. And they and they all understand the Bible. So they know that the, the things and the signs and the info that they've been able to acquire uh, matches the scriptures. And, and so then, you know, and of course, your expertise, uh, which is incredible, uh, just goes right along with the same thing. It, it the, the, all of you guys together collectively. If somebody takes a step back and says, "What did I get from all of this collectively?" Collectively, it's the watchmen are screaming on the top of the wall that time is coming to an end as we know it. It's not this world that we've been living in is not going to sustain itself, and there is a greater a greater answer. There is a remedy to all this, and his name is Jesus Christ. That's right. The watchmen are screaming. Right. You're right. 
That's right, Pastor Paul, because everything the Lord did uh, when he came into this earth, he, he, you know, he gave us a moment of freedom to really reflect, to grow, to think, um, to consider. And I think that that time has is coming abruptly to a close. And when he comes back, it's going to be too late. And, and uh, you know, that 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 sensation of all these things leading up to his return, I can't help but to see it because it's not that people don't know these days. Is that they're turning away from. Mm. And see, there, there, there's a difference between not knowing and then a person does know, but they turn away. Yeah. In today's world, people say, well, I don't want to hear that part. Just, yep. just let me go have my fun. They're turning away. Yes. And I've never, you know, I've never experienced that such volume before like it is today. It's a lot of people doing that. They're turning away. They know and they turn away. And so uh, that, that makes it different than any other time. And historically, that always happens right before the great calamities come always it never fails it yeah. always happens that way mike i appreciate you coming on tonight and uh just you know what is a fascinating evening i just really just sat here and, and absorbed a lot of great info tonight and wisdom and i think our audience did too so i really appreciate you sharing this stuff and I look forward to watching the webinar myself tomorrow evening, uh, even though I, <laughs> I was involved in it all. I look forward to listening, watching it all and taking it all in in one evening, because at the end of the day, I'm going to have a, cl a more clear picture and a more understanding of the fulfillment of God's word and the and how necessarily important we and you dropped some bombs in this i mean you really did especially when you when you just said what's gonna what you believe what you see happening in 2023 based on the information you have people better get it's gonna be a wake-up call for mankind would you agree it will be it's gonna be a it's gonna look scary um through one eye right but the lord has already told us remember anything that happens to the world it's going to be for their destruction because they made their decision. Anything that happens in the world for us is for our deliverance because our savior is the one that opens the seals that allows anything to happen to happen. So it's for us against those who are against him, right? That's why no believer should be frightened. And anybody who's on a fence realize there is no fence. A person who sits on the fence has already said no. Not today. That's what they've actually said. Not today. I'm not doing it today. So I hope that no one sits on the fence and they go ahead and recognize that initial call they had when they were young. Nobody had to teach them that Jesus was real, that Jesus was Jesus and God was God. Nobody had to teach them that. No. So that's confirmation that they have been marked. They've been touched. They've been called. Right. They're marked for eternal life, not for condemnation nor damnation. They're marked for eternal life, or they would not believe because the Bible teaches me that uh, it, it, all those, Jesus said, uh, those who have come to me, the Father hath given me, and I will in no wise lose. So if we actually believe in Christ, it's because God put the belief in us that we may be kept and fully delivered. And that's the process we undergo here. And we shouldn't get that mixed up. No, we should. Hopefully we don't. But hopefully people know that, Pastor Paul, because. Uh, we truly do have a good father and what's coming to the earth is just not going to be comforting at all. No. Mike around the world. Mike, I appreciate you coming on tonight. Uh, really do. Thank you uh, for being with us tonight. God bless. Pastor Paul is always an honor. The honor is mine, brother. It really is. God bless. All right. I think he told us it's not going to be comfortable, but for the destruction for some is going to be the deliverance. For others question is which one will it be for you and jesus said i am the way the truth and the life i've been